They came for their pay, and he gave each one of them a penny. Those that got saved 10 years ago got eternal life. Then those that came out at 12 noon, they had worked through the heat of the afternoon in the vineyard. Worked all afternoon, six hours. And when they came to be paid, he gave them a penny. It's right there in the Bible. Those that came at 6 o'clock in the morning got upset, 9 o'clock and 6 o'clock. They got upset. They come to the master and said, hold it. We've been out here through all the heat of the day. We've been laboring all day long, and they only worked an hour, and you gave them the same pay you're going to give us because he gave each one of them a penny. He said, we've suffered all day long. He said, did I agree with you for a penny? Did I agree to give you a penny at this morning? He said, I've not done you any wrong. He said, that that I have is mine to do with what I want to do with it. He said, why are you angry? Jesus put that in the Bible to show us one thing, that eternal life belongs to that one that just repented, just as well as those that have gone through all the trials and tribulations. You see, I've been fighting battles after battle after battle for the last 44 years. I've been fighting the devil for 44 years. I've been up the mountains. I've been down the mountains. I've been around the mountains. I've been in the valleys. I've done everything. I've been in a battle. But I got what God promised me. He said, you got eternal life, and I've got it. That one that just got saved a while ago. He's not been through the valleys. He's not been up the mountain and down the mountain. He's not had to fight the devil and fight the battles that we've had to fight, but he's still got eternal life. You see, it doesn't make any difference who you are. You're going to get the same thing when you repent. When God draws you into repentance and you accept Jesus Christ, you're going to receive the same gift, eternal life. And that's what he's promised each one of us. And God is a, a God of his word. He's going to give us that which he's promised us. And church, today, when you get eternal life, you need to hold on to the promises of Jesus. Because when you have the promises, yeah, we've been through a lot of battles. Yeah, I fought a lot of battles. And, and, and every time, God has brought me out victorious. Every battle I've ever been in. Now, I've been knocked down, I've been trotted upon, I've been beaten down, and I've been a little discouraged, and, I, and I've, had, I've had some bruises. But each time, my Lord and my Savior never left me in the valley. Each time, he reached down and he pulled me up and said, come on, let's do it again. He's never left any of his children in the valley. He's not going to leave you in the valley. And he's promised you many, many promises. There's thousands of promises in that word. And in the word of God, if he promises you he's going to take care of you, he's going to take care of you. He promised that when it came at 6 o'clock in the morning, I'm going to give you a gift. I'm going to give you something. And he promised that when it came at 5 o'clock in the afternoon, I'm going to give you what's right. And I'm telling you today that God's going to give you what's right in his word. What's right is he said, I'm going to give you eternal life. It doesn't matter if you've been saved for 30 or 40 years. It doesn't matter if you are the thief on the cross. It doesn't matter who you are. When you confess your sins and repent of your sins and ask Jesus Christ to come in, he comes in and he cleanses you. He writes your name in the Lamb's Book of Life, and he puts something inside of you that lets you know that he's there. He doesn't play games with you. When Jesus Christ comes in, you know that you know that you know know uh, that something is inside of you uh, and that something inside of you lets you know uh, that his word is true uh, when he promises you uh, if you ask believing doubting nothing uh, I'm going to give you the desires of your heart uh, he lets you know that it's going to come uh, when he tells you uh, that you've been healed by the stripes that he bore on Calvary when you uh, listen when Jesus tells you these things uh, you need to read it and you need to accept it uh, and don't question why how or when uh, and don't look at someone else who's being blessed uh, and uh, wonder where your blessings are because that person is being blessed because of obedience that person is being blessed because they believe the word that person is being blessed because they accepted it and they may have been saved three or four years longer they may have been saved two or three years earlier or later than you but let me tell you something it's obedience that's going to move God it's believing in the word of God that's going to move God and we've got a nation right now that's walking away from him we've got churches i heard a well-known pastor yes i'm not going to call his name 
Dave and I were flipping through the channels, and I was watching a Christmas program. And he came on just for a couple of minutes. We want to let every, the, everybody know that we're going to be joining this channel to bring you entertainment. We're going to join this entertainment channel to bring you entertainment. Didn't say a thing about to preach the gospel. Didn't say a thing. He said, bring you entertainment. It made me so sick I quit watching the, the Christmas program and went over to the news, the head channel. <laughs> That's ridiculous for a preacher to say, I'm, I'm here, I'm coming to this station to bring you entertainment. And that's exactly what he said, entertainment. Because that's about what this ministry carries as entertainment. Motivational speaking, I won't go any further than that. He's a good talker. Very good talker. Probably the best talker, motivational speaker on planet Earth today. Probably the best. And I... And I, and I give him praise, honor, and glory for being able to, to speak to people and give them confidence and lift them up. But he shouldn't call himself a preacher. He shouldn't call himself a preacher. And I know somebody is watching that knows who I'm talking about. But he shouldn't call himself a preacher, and he shouldn't have a 501c3 tax-deductible ministry. Because he doesn't preach the blood of Jesus. He doesn't preach repentance. He don't preach hell. He doesn't preach heaven. And I'm telling you today that it's the only message that I can find in the Bible. Read what Jesus commanded the disciples to do. Read what he commanded them to do. He said, go preach repentance before the, because the kingdom of heaven is at hand. And most preachers, and I'm not putting them down, but most people, most Christians have no earthly idea what the difference is between the kingdom of heaven and the kingdom of God. Most people don't have any understanding of what the kingdom of heaven is versus the kingdom of God. They don't understand it. Why? Because nobody's preaching it. Nobody's teaching it. I didn't know it until the Holy Ghost showed me. I didn't have a preacher to sit down and tell me. I didn't have a professor to sit down and say, turn so and so. Uh, I didn't have nobody to say, take this, 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 and this. Uh, it was Almighty God that came down, uh, and he said, son, let me show you something. Uh, he said, my people need to know the truth, uh, and the truth is going to make them free. Uh, you've got to stand upon uh, the Word. Uh, you've got to stand upon my Word, and you've got to proclaim the gospel. Uh, and that's what I've been trying to do and the devil has slapped me down I don't know how many times he's tried his everything he can to keep my mouth shut but I'm telling you my God every day lifts me back up and says son I want you to go one more week I want you to tell him one more time about the blood of Jesus I want you to tell him about my mighty power I want you to tell him about my anointing I want you to tell the people that it was all done on the cross that they don't have to do anything except believe all they have to do is accept what I did on the cross he said i looked up to my father and said it is finished it's finished i've done what you sent me down here to do i've redeemed the world that will accept the work that i did and church is sad today it's sad that our country is doing what it's doing with God. Our country is doing what it's doing with Jesus Christ. The Christmas tree, the Christmas lights that you were talking about, Sister Sandra. People to call and tell you to take down your lights. It offends me. Well, my gosh, get back on the boat where you came from and get back out of the country. Go back over there. If it offends you, leave the country. Praise God. There's enough children of God in here that if you want to leave the United States and go back where you came from, uh, we'll buy you a one-way ticket. Uh, hallelujah. We'll send you back where you came from. Uh, all the heathen need to be shipped out of the country. Donald Trump may say one thing, uh, but I agree with him. Hallelujah. If somebody's coming over here to kill me, uh, let's block 